Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 25th of June of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First we're going to start with Evgeny Prigozhin. After we moved him from Rostov on Don to Belarus, we still haven't received any updates about him. Uh, probably after a very difficult week he needed some vocation. I believe that in a day or two we're going to get some piece of information from him, so let's wait. Another interesting updates are coming from... Uh, Minister of Defense of Russian Federation Sergei Shoigu and the head and the head of not the head this one but this one and the head, chief of general staff of the Russian Federation uh, Valery Gerasimov. The sources are saying that uh, who is very close to the president of Russian Federation Putin and uh, they're saying that all the these two persons will be replaced by other uh, persons. For example the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation Shoigu will be replaced by the governor of uh, Tula region uh, this is very experienced person, he's ex-officer and also he has experience in the running of a region, entire region, so basically he has experience either in um, military sphere and economical and finance sphere as well, and he will replace the Sergei Shoigu, and if, he, if it's true, of course, we will replace the icon on the map and we will move Sergei Shoigu to the history. Another interesting update is about um, Valery Gerasimov, the general staff, the sources are saying that this person will be replaced by the Surovikin, the ex, uh, gen, uh, ex uh, head of special military operation, Sergei uh, Surovikin was um, like uh, was uh, head of special military operation in the autumn of the previous year, and the, under the control of that person, the Russians, if you remember, I'll remind you, um, uh, removed their forces from Kherson area to uh, the Russian side of bank of the Dnipro River. Furthermore, under his control, the Russians built this defense line, Surovikin defense line, and also under the control of Surovikin, the Russians started bombing and shelling and making missile attacks against the Ukraine energy facilities. So according to information we have, this person will replace uh, Valery Gerasimov on his position. Now let's start with the ground and first we're going to talk about uh, Kherson area because we got, finally we got some updates about this territory. Uh, the Russians reported that as a result of artillery duels they destroyed the ammo depot 126 brigade. This is the brigade. This brigade is located in the area between Novokohovka area and all over this bank right to let's say even um, a Sokorovka I believe so Furthermore, a few days ago, we started discussion the Ukrainian bridge hat on this side of Dnipro River, and today the Russians published the video how the Ukrainians were landing on that on the Russian side of the river. As you can see, few boats were going exactly to Antonov Bridge, and as a result of that, they managed to move some troopers, some forces on this bank. And basically, this video confirms that as a result of fierce fighting and small storming operations, special operations. The Ukrainians did manage to cross Dnipro River and did manage to establish the bridgehead on this territory. Probably the information, the piece of information about the tanks that were moved on this bridgehead is incorrect. So basically for now the Ukrainians do control this part of Dnipro River and this part of Antonov Bridge. Uh, the Russians are saying, and the Russian sources are saying that during the previous day they made few attempts to counterattack, but all the Russian attempts were repelled and basically the Russians were forced to step back and basically this currently this territory in the vicinity of Antonov Bridge is under Ukrainian control. So that wasn't the fake information, that was truth. We need to wait more, we need to understand whether the Ukrainians are able to hold this bridge at all, they will be forced to step back or they will be destroyed under Russian fire. The Minister of Defense reported that during the previous 24 hours, as a result of fierce fighting, artillery duels and so on, the Ukrainians lost 50 soldiers, two armored vehicles and one artillery system M777. Now we're moving to the Vremivka, to, to the Zaporozhye area, to the Vremivka tactical bridge, to Petihatki. The Ukrainians continue accumulation of their forces in the vicinity of Petihatki, but without any attempts to attack. Now they wait. Uh, the Russian sources are saying that the Ukrainians are are planning to restart or launch the attack somewhere in the 28th, 27th of June. For now, they're doing like accumulation process, trying to get as much as possible forces, trying to accumulate probably blood, try, trying to just trying to prepare themselves before another suicide, suicide operation on this bridgehead. 
When talking about Bradley Square, the Russians published a video how they were bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions in the vicinity of Malatakmachka, Novodanilovka, Arekhov, as you can see, there's a very fierce fighting, very fierce artillery duels. I can't even imagine what exactly can survive under such a heavy fire from the Russian side. As you can see, there are a lot of explosions on this video, a lot of attacks, a lot of missile launches and so on. So basically, the Russians continue on holding this bridgehead. From the other side, we know that the Ukrainians as a result of fighting during the previous days managed to to penetrate the first defense belt of the russians in the vicinity between in the area between novodanilovka and Rabotina, and currently they entered uh, this first defense line at least uh, somewhere here on the road uh, basically they have returned the positions that they lost during the previous counter-offensive operation from the russian side and uh, they continue ac accumulating their forces and one more time according to the russian sources the ukrainians are planning to restore and restart their attempts to attack the north of Rabotina on the 27th and 28th of june those these dates now we are moving further to the vremivka tactical bridge had uh, the situation is very difficult but for the ukrainians the russians reported that they repelled another attack in the vicinity of periutina there was a like, few attacks in this direction all of them were repelled furthermore the russians published the video Video how the Ukrainians were trying to supply and support their forces in Makarova. Makarova is the settlement that located on the lowland, this one, and basically the Ukrainians have just one possibility to support the settlement using this road. Currently, this is another living road for the Ukrainians. And this road, of course, located, is located in the lowland, and the Russians control the hills on the west, and of course the Russians do have perfect visible control or fire control and as you can see in this video the Ukrainians were trying to send some armored fist few tanks few armored vehicles uh, small convoy and they're doing this every day uh, because they need to supply and support this media victory at uh, this useless settlement and they need to keep control over this useless settlement and the only possible solution for them is to send endless waves of vehicles to this uh, settlement the russians see everything and the russians of course do a lot of fire as you can see on this video there was an explosion right in front of tank or probably one of the tank was destroyed on this video we see how the tank was destroyed so basically uh, the Ukrainians did manage to capture the settlement but basically they captured the trap they captured the artillery back and they appeared they currently they're located in, the, in artillery back and they're under 24 hours fire and uh, I'm not sure that this is like things that worse this uh, Makarov worse the losses Ukrainians have every day so as you can see they can't even bypass this road and they were forced to stop and basically either they have were forced to return or they were left these vehicles on the road and that's it uh, the Russians reported that as a result of those fierce fightings in the vicinity of Arekhov on the Bradley Square and the Vremivka tactical bridgehead, the Ukrainians lost 170 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles, including 1 tank and 5 artillery systems. Now we are moving further to the Furthermore, the Minister of Defense, as always, published another, another series of videos how they are using their helicopters and using helicopters were attacking the Russian Ukrainian positions somewhere in Zaporozhye and somewhere in the vicinity of uh, Bradley Square. A lot of new videos, uh, almost every single day, more and more armored vehicles are destroyed by the Russian helicopters, by their rockets, by their missile systems, Tugna. This is a perfect weapon, uh, as you can see, uh, all these uh, videos was made in, during the night the, these helicopters have a perfect night vision system and they can coordinate and target any type of weapon that vehicles that ukrainians currently have and i remind you that most of the helicopters are located on the like airport in birdyansk and the russians send them to the east uh, in direction of bradley square and petihatke and of course to the north in direction of the vremivka tactical bridgehead when talking about donetsk the russians reported they repelled the ukrainians attacks in the vicinity of Marinka, as usually the same situation, the same stories without any progress both sides. The Russians repelled Ukrainian attacks in the vicinity of Pervomaiska. The Russians repelled Ukrainian attempts to attack the Russian positions in Oputna from Avdeevka. And of course, as usually, the Russians repelled Ukrainian attack from Keramik in direction of the small settlement Krasnogorovka. All those attacks were repelled. Also, the Russians destroyed the MO Depot 110th um, mechanized brigade in the vicinity of Avdeevka. This is the brigade 110th. The total losses of the Ukrainians were around 430 soldiers, 21 armored vehicles and one artillery system. As you can see, the losses are very heavy. 
and mainly the level of losses is connected with the situation with Prigozhin that took place that took place yesterday uh, because the Ukrainians thought and believed that uh, the situation in Russia will be will develop in an unpredictable way and they tried to uh, name the they um, try their luck and they're attacked and uh, basically the level of losses is completely because of like attempt to uh, use the situation and so on because uh, Avdiivka and Donetsk is not the only place where the Ukrainians were trying to attack. The Russians report they managed to repel uh, around 10 attacks in the vicinity of uh, Artyomovsk. Um, furthermore, according to some sources, the Ukrainians did have possibilities to develop some bridgehead in the vicinity of Kurdyumovka. They captured the uh, channel and currently the entire bank of the channel, the, Ukraine, the western bank, is under complete Ukrainian control. Furthermore, some sources are saying that Ukrainians uh, captured fortifications on the north of Kordyumovka. If you ask my opinion, I believe this like fake information. The Ukrainians haven't established control over the trenches on, on the over the fortifications on the north of Klishevka. Also, the Ukrainians were trying to attack in the direction of Yahidna. That attack was repelled by the Russians, and also the Russians uh, from this area published the video of trenches and the, it's a it's a picture of living road on this bridge hat it's very difficult to see but anyways you consider a lot of destroyed armored vehicles a lot of destroyed uh, vehicles along this road and there are a lot of trenches and something like moon uh, picture of, of moon on this territory furthermore the russians published another video how they were bombing and shelling the ukrainian positions on the south in the forest of berhovka water reserver using drones using artilleries and uh, uh, using all type of weapon they have, trying to prevent to slow down and stop the Ukrainians in their advancing in the direction of Berhovka and Yahidne. Also, the Ukrainians made some attempts to attack the Russians from Orechovo Vasilyevka in direction of Dubovo Vasilyevka and from in direction of Zaliznyanska. All those attacks were repelled by the Russians as well. Now we are moving to Sivir's Kliman front line. There are not much many updates during the previous 24 hours. The Ukrainians made few attacks uh, of the Russian positions in the vicinity in this like area in the vicinity of this small salient there are the ukrainians were trying to attack the russians in the vicinity of dubrova all those attacks were repelled by the russians and also the russians uh, attacked uh, the ukrainian reserves in the vicinity of dubrova 63rd 67th mechanized brigade and also the attack the ukrainians in nevska the same force 63rd and 67th mechanized brigade and as we can see there are no changes on the ground but the level of loss is very heavy uh, the Russians are saying that as a result of fierce fighting, the, Ukra the Ukrainians lost 130 soldiers, 5 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems on this bridgehead. Now we are moving to the most important, the most interesting part of the previous 24 hours. We are going to talk about Kupin's front line. The Russians uh, published a video how they destroyed another ammo depot somewhere in the Kupin's front line. This icon is not geolocated. The explosion took place somewhere in the Kupin's front line. As you can see, it was a very heavy explosion. The Russians managed to discover and destroy ammo depot the total losses of the ukrainians according to the ministry of defense is not so heavy just 25 soldiers but according to some sources and officers on the ground the russians managed to develop their bridgehead in the vicinity of kupiansk and uh, as we discussed a few days ago the russians captured sinkovka at least some sources are saying this and furthermore we got another some kind of map from the soldier on the ground from this um, situation on the ground that the russians uh, either captured sinkovka and also the russians managed to develop their bridge hat in the vicinity of Sinkovka on the eastern side of Sinkovka. So basically, this is the current situation in this area. The Russians managed to develop their bridge hat uh, also in on in the fields between Pershatravneva and Sinkovka. And but this is not the most important part. The thing is that if you remember a few days ago, we discussed that there was a talk, there was like a piece of information that the Russians managed to cross the Skol River in third place and to develop the bridge hat somewhere else, not in on the south of Duryechna and not in the vicinity of Novomlinsk. There was a third area, and we didn't have any information about um, any piece of information where exactly the Russians managed to do this and basically this map show us the proximate area of that attack as you can see this is in Kovka this like where you can where you see the arrows is the arrows of Russian attack in direction of Sinkovka and in direction of the settlement that located on the south this one in Petropavlovka but there is another interesting piece of information on the west side of this red cloud there is a river Askol and this is the bridgehead and this is the area where the Russians managed to cross the river so basically on this map and this is the perfect as you can see this part of river is not straight it's like 
like uh, like uh, letter S, like a uh, letter dollar. So it's very difficult to build the pontoon bridge in this territory. But this uh, part of Oskol River is the perfect area to create a bridgehead. There is a road among the trees. The Russians do have possibilities to send some tanks and so on. So basically, as a result of fierce fighting, the Russians managed to cross the river on this territory, capture this forest and to create this bridge. So basically, the Russians have three bridgeheads in the vicinity of Kupiansk. The first one on the north of Kupiansk, in the vicinity of Golubovka and Rat um, Ratkovka. The second bridgehead the Russians have on the south of Dvorechna, this one. And the third bridgehead the Russians has in the settlement by the name of Novomlinsk. So, uh, if you ask me, I see that everything is ready to begin the offensive operation in Kupiansk. The Russians, of course, will try to attack um, Figulovka and uh, the northern part of Dvorechna, trying to cut these roads and these supply areas. The third, the second attack is going to be in the middle between this bridgehead and the uh, on the south of Dvorechna and, of course, course uh, to the west in direction of Zapadne to cut supply roads and from this bridgehead the Russians need of course few time few days to create normal like uh, like fortifications uh, to build trenches to establish supply road to move some tanks in forest to hide them and so on and after that the Russians will try to develop their bridgehead of course to the south in direction of Golubovka they need a settlement for these purposes not just the forest but it's uh, just the normal settlements where they can hide the russians will attack this industrial zone to the west this one uh, the russians will attack the forest that located on the north uh, west this one and uh, of course uh, they will cut they will try to cut uh, the ukrainian supply and their forces in Kind kindrashovka and, and after that the Russians will turn to the south and they will start offensive operation of the western part of Kupiansk. The Russians have a lot of options how to uh, uh, take Kupiansk. They don't, I believe they don't want to destroy or ruin the settlement as Prigozhin did in Bakhmut and Artyomovsk. Because and if they will attack Kupiansk from the east, like from Sinkovka and Pers Petropavlovka, of course they will be forced to ruin this settlement. But if the Russians will try to encircle Kupiansk from the north, from Dvorechno, from Zapadne, from this bridgehead, then they will be able to save the settlement to cut supply roads like uh, along this red line to encircle the forces the inside of there and to force them to step back to the south in direction of let's say like Barova like uh, like Liman let's say in direction of Liman so basically this is the plan I'll remind you that from the Ukrainian side there are forces of 14th mechanized brigade that is located that have, have been located uh, here since maybe the autumn of the previous year there is a newly redeployed 80 88th mechanized brigade there are um, a rocket artillery brigade there are Kraken Special forces. There are forces of 92nd Mechanized Brigade. On the north, there are forces of 101st Brigade of for the protection of general staff. There is 105th Defense Brigade, and there is a 15th Artillery Brigade in the vicinity of uh, Kharkiv and so on. So basically, we see that step by step, by the Russians launch their offensive operation in the direction of Kupiansk. And there are a lot of reasons to do this. And the first one is that the Russians uh, half a year ago or a year ago promised the citizens of this area that they will be with the Russians and that the Russians are not going to leave. Uh, during the autumn, the previous day, they were forced to run away from these positions. Currently, they need to restore them. And the second main reason is that uh, there is a very important railroad that goes from the mainland to Liman, then to Artyomov. So it's a very important logistical hub, very important economical part of this region that needed to be under Russian control if they want to uh, to develop this region successfully, no matter the situation in the future. And furthermore, of course, if we are going to talk anywhere, any any day about the offensive operation of Slavians in Kramatorsk, the Russians need to turn control over this part of Ukraine as well. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.